Thank you, Jenny. That was beautiful. Welcome to Christ Church, the Celtic service. We're glad that you're here. Just a couple of reminders that um, you are in a meeting format on Zoom. So that means that your audio and your video is live. And uh, while we have places to participate for all of us, um, it's easiest if the uh, audio stays muted so that we don't have a bunch of bouncing around sound, but we hope that you will fully participate in all of the places that call for the people's response. You'll hear me out loud saying them, but please join me in those responses. And even though we are either miles or um, feet apart, uh, we know that we are saying those words together and it matters. So thank you for being here. A word about today's second reading, which is the gospel for the day. It's a grisly tale from our history and from our tradition of John the Baptist being decapitated and executed by Herod. It's rich for our tradition though. So I hope you will hold that story and I hope you'll be able to see as we look through it how it really is the challenge that we all face today in finding, as Amos would tell us, the plumb line, the line that brings right relationship with each other and ethical conduct into our life and know that we will often be persecuted for following that, but that we hold on to that reality of John offering himself and especially the reality of Jesus laying down his life for us to bring us new life in God. 
welcome again. It's always a pleasure to be with this community of intention. Come to us this night, O God. Come to us with light. Speak to us this night, O God. Speak to us your truth. Dwell with us this night, O God. Dwell with us in love. Thanks be to you, O Christ. For the many gifts you have bestowed on us, each day and night, each sea and land, each weather fair, each calm, each wild. Each night may we remember your mercy given so gently and generously. Each thing we have received from you it came. Each thing for which we hope from you from your love it will come. Each thing we enjoy it is of your bounty. Each thing we ask comes of your disposing. O oh God, from whom each thing that is freely flows. Grant that no tie over strict, no tie over dear, may be between ourselves and this world. Amen. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. O oh God, as these words are read, in our hearts may we feel your presence. A reading from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, 
and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, O oh, seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from Mark. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guest. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guest, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. They brought the Baptist up from the jail. She danced the dance of the seven veils. Herod said, I'll give you anything. They brought in his head on a silver plate. She kissed his mouth. It's a great screenplay. I don't know if any of you know what that's from. 
but it's from the musical Sunset Boulevard, which ran in the 90s. I saw it in the West End of London, and it was based on the black and white movie from the 50s that starred Gloria Swanson. And the character she played was Norma Desmond. And Norma Desmond was this silver screen actress of the silent movies. And she's lived a reclusive life ever since technology has taken her art form away from her. So she has decided that she's going to make a return, as she says. She thinks that's much nicer than a comeback. And her return is going to be starring in this film that she's scripting called Salome, based on this story, based on the daughter of Herod and Herodias. And it is a gripping tale, just as the gospel is, of deceit and conniving, and what happens is that a young, aspiring, handsome rider's car breaks down in front of her Sunset Boulevard mansion, and he goes there to get help. And she finds out he's a writer, and so she makes him read the script, and then she sings that song about Salome. There are so many great scenes, I can't wait. A boiling cauldron of love and hate. And the interesting thing about the story is that she, of course, falls in love with this young, charming man, but she wants to use him to bring her back to a youthful place in her life. And she begins to experience all kinds of, of we wouldn't say dementia, but insanity till at the end of the film she really is. But he witnesses exactly what he can get out of the situation and he's listening to her rattle on and he sings to the audience, a garbled plot from a scrambled brain, but I had my own plot brewing. And I think it's so telling about this gospel. It's a story of plots all over the place. What's so interesting is that Herod likes John the Baptist. He's perplexed by him the gospel says, but he likes him and it grieves him deeply when he's asked to give this token of his head to his wife. John the Baptist did have an issue with Herod and it was about this marriage, but Mark has kind of garbled the plot also. It isn't Philip who is Herod's brother. Philip is actually the husband who will marry later the young girl, Salome, or the unnamed girl, the daughter of him. But it's kind of easy to get that mixed up because Herod had 10 wives. And so keeping that, that line of descendants who were all named Herod after him straight is very difficult. And I think the worst thing that's in this story and we know it from our own lives, is that this young girl is portrayed as a sinful woman. And this dance that Norma Desmond creates is, is some seductive tale. And yet that isn't accurate at all. The girl would have been 12 years of age, maybe. And she does please Herod with her dance and the guests, but it's very much the way that a parent would be pleased if a child is performing for them. It, there's something seductive about it. There is no, there is none of this imagery that we've often especially laid on women in the Bible, either because they were powerful or because they were threatening in their righteousness. And I think even the worst thing is that both Herodias and Herod will use their daughter to appease the other. And the child becomes the pawn certainly for the mother who knows that she can use the child to finally get what her husband will never give her. And then Herod will swear oath after oath to the girl to do whatever it is she asks. And when she plays the part of the mother's request, Herod's mortified. He, he's greatly distressed, the gospel says, but he too out of all of the oaths that he's sworn, can't disappoint 
the public image that his guests would have of him or that his daughter. And he goes, I think, more than likely against every grain of his own integrity to save face, if you will. Herod will continue down that road. Herod will be the same Herod that faces Jesus and will hand this Jesus back to Pontius Pilate because he doesn't want anything to do with him. Herod could have saved Jesus. He could have saved John, but he can't because he has to save himself more than anyone else. And this story, as you read it and reflect on it, is a parallel, really, of what will come to Jesus' disciples, how he'll be rejected, how he will be executed, and how the true disciples of Jesus, Nicodemus and Philip, Joseph of Arimathea, and the women will bury the Jesus', Jesus body in a tomb. I want us to reflect on how much we see that in our own life, how easy it is that we can be steered away from our commitment to our Christian faith, but to save ourselves in, in the eyes of others. And unfortunately, it's all around us in our culture now, in which deceit and lies and jiggling and juggling and compromise, giving away things in promise that we have no right to give away, just like Herod does. Herod couldn't have divided his kingdom. He wasn't really a king. He was a tetrarch, and he was the agent of, of another king. But he's willing to offer something he can't honor to receive the honor back to him. And that is exactly the opposite of what Amos does. Amos, a prophet, but in all of his humility says, no, I'm not able to do this. But God calls him to go out and, and shows him a plumb line. And we all know what a plumb line is. It's what you use when you're building a house or a wall or construction, because there isn't any, any corner of any house that's exactly straight, right? So you snap the line and some things are further away from it and closer and some things bend around. But that plumb line is what we use to construct hopefully the right wall, hopefully in our Christian life, the right ethical bias. And what God says is this is the line of righteousness and mercy. And this is what everyone is going to be expected to uphold now. And we find ourselves having to lower ourselves sometimes to come to that plumb line because we become way too powerful and way too self-indulgent. And many times we have to lift ourselves up because we, like Amos, become too humble and self-reproaching and self-incriminating. But will we be able to respond as Amos does with humility, with accepting God's gift for us, but knowing that it isn't something that's ours to possess and ours to sell for the right price. I had an experience this week in the parish in which I learned that I had offended someone in our community. It wasn't my intention. I didn't realize that I had done it. That made it more distressing really than anything. But the beauty of that experience and the grace is that this individual reached out to me directly to tell me that. That kind of honesty, rather than going around triangulating or, or telling two or three people and creating a, a broader issue, they came to me and I value that so deeply, that that kind of trust and that kind of confidence and that kind of courage is what Christ Church models. And if we do that, we are the plumb line then. We are striking the right line against which we can all be brought together as a community and not dispersed out of misunderstanding or out of malice or out of intentional conflict and hate. Will we be like John the Baptist and Jesus and Amos, 
and reach out offering our lives almost always so that someone else can be lifted up from their deaths and from their pain. Or we be like so many voices we hear in the world today, like Norma Desmond, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. Amen. Let us profess our common faith. We believe, O God of all gods, that you are the eternal God of life. We believe, O God of all gods, that you are the eternal God of love. We believe, O God and maker of all creation, that you are the creator of the high heavens, that you are the creator of the deep seas that you are the creator of the stable earth. We believe, O God of all the peoples, that you created our souls and set them warp, that you created our bodies and gave them breath, that you made us in your own image. We are giving you worship with our whole lives. We are giving you assent with our whole power. We are giving you our existence with our whole mind. We are giving you kneeling with our whole desire. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. O Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. O Christ, kindle in our hearts within a flame of love to our neighbor, to our foes, to our friends, to our kindred all. O Christ of the poor and the yearning, from the humblest thing that lives to the name that is highest of all, kindle in our hearts within a flame of love. Creator God, for daily bread and all who work to bring your harvest home, we bring our thanks today. Forgive our ingratitude, we who have so much, yet waste what you have given. For those whose harvest is poor, whose crops have withered, water tainted, children starve, help those who bring relief and bestow on us an unaccustomed generosity that all might share from your garden 
and all might sing your praise. Creator God, provider of all, we bring our thanks today. We are placing our souls and our bodies under your guardian this night, O Christ. Son of God, be this night both light and shield. Amen. Deep peace be in your thinking. Deep peace be in your hearts. Deep peace between you and God's good earth. Deep peace between you and your neighbor. Brothers and sisters, the deep peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace to all. Peace be with you. Peace be with Invite us to present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. O oh Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us a place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, may praise you in that city of which he is the light and where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just work, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. O God, Father and Mother of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Heaven is intertwined with earth. We have taken divine life into ours. Let us pray. We rise up today clothed in the strength of Christ. We go freed to weave Christ's patterns. We shall not fear. We go loved to serve Christ's weak ones. We shall not be overwhelmed. We are not alone. May the peace of Christ go with us wherever we are sent. May Christ guide us through the wilderness and protect us from the storm. May Christ bring us home rejoicing at the wonders shown us. May Christ bring us home again, rejoicing into our doors. May the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.